What is up, my friends? Today, we're talking about the base hydrolysis of esters. So hydrolysis means, means that we're splitting apart our ester, and we're going to do that with a base. So we could use sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, basically the same bases you saw in the neutralization of carboxylic acids. And in fact, it's really useful for you to be familiar with the neutralization of carboxylic acids before you watch this video, so I'll link to that below. This process is also called saponification, which you'll hear in the context of making soap. So this chemical reaction has been run for millennia by people making soap and what they do is they combine a base usually lye with fat and fat contains a bunch of esters so this reaction is the first step you do in making soaps so we'll go ahead and take a look at what base hydrolysis is and then we'll go through a few practice problems so the base hydrolysis of an ester is the splitting of an ester into an alcohol that's one of the products and a carboxylate salt that's the other product by the addition of a base so we already know what an alcohol looks like. It has the OH group on it. But this carboxylate salt can maybe sound a little confusing. It's derived from a carboxylic acid. So let's just draw a carboxylic acid. And remember, when we neutralize carboxylic acids, what happens is we come along and we get rid of that H. And that leaves behind an O-. minus. That guy is what we call a carboxylate ion. So that's carboxylate. And if I put an ion on the other side, say like a sodium that's positive, then now it's a carboxylate salt because we have a cation and an anion. We have a positive thing and a negative thing. So that's actually going to be one of our products. We're always going to have some sort of carboxylate salt when we run this base hydrolysis of esters. And as I already said, the process is used to make soap. And when within that context, we call it saponification. All right, let's run through one example here. And then I'll give you some step-by-step -step instructions for solving these problems. All right, so our ester is split right along this bond just like an acid hydrolysis of an ester, which is another video I'll link to below that's good for you to be familiar with before you jump into this one. And all we're gonna do is copy each half of our molecule, and the left-hand side with the C double O bond is gonna make our carboxylate salt. Apparently I can't talk. Carboxylate salt, there we go. And the right-hand side is gonna make our alcohol. Okay, so let's just do that really quickly. We're gonna copy each half. Let's copy the left half first. Remember, in our organic reactions, it's almost always a good idea to start by copying the reactant and then think about how it changes. And we broke the bond right here. So that's where we're going to stop adding anything from our ester. And now, actually, uh, something a little strange happens. The Na and the O come over and attach right here. Okay? And we put the O on there first, O minus. And then the Na hangs out there as a positive charge. So here's an ion that's pairing up with my negatively charged oxygen. And that, of course, you'll recognize as our carboxylate salt. And then to get the rest of the products, we're just gonna go ahead and copy the rest of our ester on the right-hand side there. And we have an O connected up to a carbon and down to another carbon. And we get an H tacked on there, again, from our base. So notice we've tracked with the H from our base, the O from our base and the sodium from our base all have been distributed here in the splitting of this ester to make a carboxylate salt and an alcohol. Okay, let's give you a few rules here that will always help you write the products. First, we draw a line through the CO single bond, check. Then we're going to rewrite the C double bonded to the O side, so this left-hand side in this case. And we're going to go ahead and add an O, and I'll track the base in orange this time. So we're adding that O, and then we're going to add that K. And we do write the charges, so it's K plus and O minus. All right, and then the other product we get is from writing the oxygen that's single bonded to carbon, that side, we rewrite that O up, down, up, and we're going to go ahead and track this H down to there to make our alcohol. Okay, so there you go. That's another base hydrolysis of an ester. One more example. Here we have some substituents and also our carboxylic acid, I'm sorry, our ester has been flipped upside down, but same basic process. We're going to split right here. And first, I'm going to redraw the side with the C double O bond, as we say in step two. So that goes down to our double bonded oxygen, up to a carbon, up to another carbon, and down to another carbon. If it feels weird to you to write that upside down, you can go ahead and just flip that ester first. And then we're going to go ahead and take the O and the Li from the lithium hydroxide. So it goes to an O that's negative and an Li that's plus. There's our carboxylate salt. And now we copy the other side of the molecule there to go ahead and get our alcohol. So we have chlorine up to a carbon, down to a carbon, and then up to an oxygen. And the hydrogen from our lithium hydroxide comes down here to complete that alcohol. Okay, so that's predicting the products for a base hydrolysis of an ester.